So what exactly is the quarterback battle going to look like this summer and fall? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. We're celebrating a War Report Wednesday on a Friday hey. as Mike G of the War Report joins us today. We've got a little mailbag action tackling three of the bigger questions that I've seen. People DMing me on Twitter. Sending uh, sending messages through Discord, text messages, questions in real life. We're going to tackle three of the bigger questions that, that we're getting right now. Mike G, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So what's the quarterback battle going to look like this summer and fall? Obviously, you get Peyton Thorne to bring in Robbie Ashford. TJ Finley leaves. The baby goat Hank Brown is coming in. You also got Holden Gurner, who's been here for a little over a year now. Mike G, to me... I'm kind of of the belief that as soon as Peyton Thorne transferred here, he was the unofficial starter for Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers. I think the way that all went down, leaving um, a solid, solid uh, program and a decent situation, not a great situation, but entering the portal and kind of just the buzz around him entering the portal before he ever entered the portal and being tied to Auburn. I just think there's probably some conversations between Peyton and Hugh Freeze that it's clear that they kind of are already finishing each other's sentences. And I think there's going to be a battle for the sake of there being a battle, but I don't know if I actually believe it. Uh, yeah, they're going to try to sell it like this. Uh, Zach, I'll, I'll put it a little bit more plainly. The, the quarterback battle is, is over, right? The battle is for second place. Peyton Thorne is going to be the starting quarterback at Auburn University this fall. Uh, you know, Hugh Freeze has talked repeatedly about what he's looking for in a quarterback. Leadership. He's talked, yeah, leadership. He's talked yeah. about intangibles. Peyton Thorne embodies that. Um, uh, I got a chance to meet him. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, from the time he shook my hand, I thought QB won. Right? So, I mean, you know, and, and, and I know that they try to sell – Oh, well, there's going to be a QB battle and, you know, we want it to go into the fall. We're not making any decisions. But to your point, you know, from the time he stepped on campus, I mean, they went out and they got him for a reason. And they went out and they got somebody mm -hmm. who could come in and compete immediately because these guys that were that exist on the roster now, they weren't Hugh Freeze's guys. Robbie wasn't. Holden wasn't, you know, um, and anybody who was here wasn't Hugh Freeze's sure. guy. Right? right. And I think there's something to be said for going out and getting your guy. It's going to be his system. Ultimately, he's the one that's responsible for what they go out there and do. So I think he should have his guy. Now, does that mean you stop developing the other guys? Absolutely not. No. Because, you know, the SEC has taught us over half of the teams in the conference went to QB1 to start a QB2 to start a full game last season, right? Uh, before game nine, I believe it was. So these were significant games. How many? It's over seven. Seven teams in the SEC had to go to QB2. Right to start a full game before before, before week, week nine. nine. That's a good yeah. nugget. That's a good yeah. nugget, Mike. Right, like holy crap, man. Listen, uh, QBs go down, and you know Robbie Ashford. I think is a good option to have if the QB goes if your QB goes down because he's so multifaceted, right? And sure. what you hope happens during that time is that the things that caused him to maybe not win this job, right? Sometimes failure is our best teacher in life, Zach. Right. You know, you know, we fail, we fall down, we reassess and then we say, OK, you know what? I didn't win it this time, but this is how I get myself back in the race when there's an opportunity. You have to stay ready. So Hugh Freeze's job is to make sure that beyond Peyton Thorne, Auburn has options and good options at that. Right. So, right. You know, there's, there's so, still a battle going on. It's, uh, to me, it's just not for QB one. So so as far as the quote unquote battle goes. I'm interested to see how long it takes because reps are so important, right? In, in fall. And also, they're even more important for Peyton Thorne because he hasn't really done any organized reps at Auburn, right? I mean, he's going to do some workouts, you know, some player-led workouts and things like that. But as far as, you know, going team and, and practice, like there's just not that many reps to go around. And I think you're going to have to see a lot of these guys that they got through the second transfer portal window be kind of thrust in quicker because they need reps because they didn't go through spring, which is kind of wild to, to think about. So 
I just don't think it could be something that we've traditionally seen at Auburn when there is a quarterback battle where right. it takes three weeks for a, a quarterback to be named. I think you got to name it soon. I think you got to name it pretty quick because you need to give as many reps as possible to all these newcomers that weren't on the team, you know, right, right. Uh, until like a month ago. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, I've always been of the opinion that name your starters sooner rather than later. Um, we asked you for this, you know, in the spring about QB battles. Do you think you'll, you know, name a starter by the end of the spring? He made it clear that the battles would go on into the fall. Again, I, he's, I get it. You have to say that for the sake of keeping competition going, but that's cap. We knew that there was some separation being made by some guys, whether it was on the field or in the playbook and, you know, in the, yeah, in sure. the meeting room, you know, or with leadership, like there was the separation was being made this spring. He knows who those guys are. He's not going to tell us who they are, but you know, fortunately for you and me, we got to go out and see, and we have eyes that we can tell, you know, <laughs> right. in the interviews we've done, that separation is being made by some guys. And that's why I, I feel pretty confident in coming out and saying, hey, man, Peyton Thorne, QB1, uh, I think that he's going to have to lose it personally. Like something's going to have to go wrong for him this fall and fall camp for him not to be the starting quarterback come September versus, uh, what is it, Sanford? Sanford, I think, is a game one. Uh, it's UMass. UMass, sorry. UMass. No, they're all the same. Totally get it. Totally get it. Uh, no, I'm there. I'm there with you. And so then, like the backup gig, like can Robbie beat out Holden Garner? The baby goat's not backing down. Hank Brown. Like I I'm interested to see like who would in theory get second string because like I don't know if it's necessarily going to be given to Robbie because sure. I think you know from a style standpoint, like Holden's probably more similar to Peyton. But do mm -hmm. you want kind of a, a different type of? aspect of your offense for your backup quarterback or do you want it to be similar so that, well that's going to be a style choice that Hugh Freeze is going to have to make Hugh Freeze was talking at like one of those alumni dinner things and the had, ambush things yeah yeah and he said he had he had hinted that there might be packages for Robbie so um if I had to give somebody the edge for QB2 it would be Robbie because yeah ultimately you well know, you, you got can, a guy you can make packages for Robbie you can make packages for Robbie without him being QB2 yeah, I, I don't see that happening though, man. I I, I, I just I just think that you know, with all the on field experience he has in the SEC, um, that he's definitely got the leg up as far there's as value there. Go. Yeah, there's value yeah. in having gone out there and played against Alabama. I mean, that Robbie Ashford led offense put up 300 yards, the most yards on the ground against any yeah. Nick Saban defense since he came to Alabama since 2007. So, you know, having that experience to me is invaluable and mm -hmm. it's a, it's going to be about building the other things that caused him to not win this job. So you get you get leadership together. Um, you know, you you work on the short to intermediate passes the, the, the you know, the touch on his balls, you know, the things that he needs to improve, you know, to be a viable QB one, you know, anywhere. Right. These are things that you need to be a viable QB one anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. And so, I mean, I, I think there's definitely a role for Robbie on this team. I think there needs to be. I think he's too athletic to not use him. Now, I don't know if that's three times a game. I don't know if it's six times a game. I, I don't know. And it may vary, right? Yeah. It may be a red zone thing. It may not be. I, I don't know. Hugh Freeze is really good at calling plays in the red zone. So, mm -hmm. you would think that, that extra element that Robbie Ashford could bring could possibly help that. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, certainly. Well, well, Zach, let me end on this. Okay. If September comes... And Robbie Ashford is QB one. I would feel really good about Robbie Ashford if he like goes if, and wins the job. If he won the job, yeah. After all the things that we just said, mm -hmm. right? I would I would feel really good about him as QB one, right? I think it's unlikely, but if he did, you know, or if for some reason we felt like there was a real QB battle late in, and Hugh Freeze was waiting to name a starter, and we're like, wait, who's it going to be? Um, that would make me feel a little better about op Robbie Ashford, but maybe not as great about Peyton Thorne. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll see, man. Uh, hopefully, Auburn is building to a place where what they have is legit competitions going on. I will say that again: legit competitions going on for the starting job, and fans are not just being sold. Oh, it was close in the guy. Well, yeah, and, and I think thing. that's going to happen after Peyton Thorne, right? Like, I think mm -hmm. two years of Peyton. And then you've got Hank Brown versus Walker White. These are both yep. Hugh Freeze guys that you know he wanted from the high school level. They both do a lot of things that you really, really like as a quarterback. And so I think that's when it starts. Uh, I'm Absolutely. with you. I'm with you. I think true legitimate competition in every position is the goal. And you got to recruit at a high level for 
a continued amount of time for that to happen. We're just not quite there yet as a program. I like Peyton Thorne a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Peyton Thorne seems to be the guy. So we'll see. All right, who is the biggest transfer this season that will impact 2023? We're getting rid of the skill positions. Non-skill position transfer. We tell you in just a moment, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. They make you look good. They are the most comfortable pair of shorts and pants out there, Mike G. They, uh, they've got this stretch khaki short design. They're able to fit uh, slimmer through the thigh, and they give you that truly sculpted look. Mike G's legs already look great. <laughs> But if you were wearing I'm, I'm, I'm weak. <laughs> if you were wearing bird dogs, they'd look even better, Mike G. So you need to head over to birddogs.com slash locked on college and our promo code locked on college. You can get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler. I love these things. They're very versatile. They're extremely comfortable. They've got the you can get them with or without the liner, but that's like pretty much the only shorts I wear is that. And then I wear like khaki long khaki pants when i go to church that's like really the only time i ever take them off so check them out once again bird dogs.com slash locked on college for a free yeti style tumbler you will not want to take your bird dogs off we promise you mike g of the war rapport our guest today so the biggest non-skill position transfer mm. in 2023 i'm sticking by it i said it after the first window i'm sticking by it now i still think it's gonna britain I still think it's going to Britain. When I said that in the the okay. first time, I assumed he would be the left tackle, and it certainly seems like that will be Dylan Wade. But I just think Gunnar Britton is an NFL tackle, Mike. I think he looks the part. I think he's fantastic. You could say any three of these offensive linemen, I would totally give it to you. Um, if you wanted to say Avery Jones or Dylan Wade, I'd be fine with that as well. But I, I think Gunnar Britton and his impact on this team is going to be tremendous. I don't think it's going to be something that necessarily shows up in the stat sheet. But when we're several games into conference playing, it's like, okay, Auburn's rushing for more yards per game. There's fewer sacks. Um, you know, the quarterbacks are standing up and getting hit less and less and less. I think Gunnar Britton's going to be a big part of that. Yeah, um, I'm going with Dylan Wade. That's a great answer. I'm going with Dylan Wade in this uh, here at, at the offensive line. Our guy Cole Kublik has been selling me on Dylan Wade every week. Every once in a while, I get a text from Cole, and he'll be like, Dylan Wade, and that's all it'll say. That's just Dylan and, Wade. <laughs> and, and, uh, I think I think he did a whole breakdown on our show on his own show about Dylan yeah. Wade. Go check them out, Cube Show Pod. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I think Dylan Wade. Uh, it's hard not to look at the offensive line if we're talking non-skill positions because they brought in so many guys there, and that was a position where or, or position group where there was a lot of improvement needed if Auburn is going to be successful. Now, we just got through talking about quarterbacks, right? Who's going to protect them, right? You've got to protect your quarterback. And, you know, we looked at the pressure stats, the PFF pressure stats on Peyton Thorne. It seems as if protection may be super important for him, uh, you know, on the run and on the move when he gets outside of the pocket, uh, you know, accuracy, a lot of things drop off significantly into, you know, trouble you know uh, uh territory so you got to protect your quarterback man it, it, it's, it's going to be important in this league not only uh for the passing game but in the run game as well too like you know you want to be able to get your running back to the second level you don't want him dodging like tank was dodging defenders in the backfield you know yeah i mean we're gonna look back in a few years at tank and be like what he did was actually pretty incredible, incredible. i don't, I don't think we gave him enough love because i think he's gonna be great for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of talk about like how revamped the offensive line is, right? Yeah. Um, Andrew Stefaniak wrote at AuburnDaily.com. You can check it out, AuburnDaily.com. He wrote about how like the projected offensive line is actually smaller than it was a year ago, which I think is pretty interesting. So we're assuming the offensive line is from left to right, Dylan Wade, Jeremiah Wright, Avery Jones, Tate Johnson, and Gunnar Britton. And if you switch one of those guards out with Connor Lou, it doesn't change that much. It does change a little bit, but so that's that's our guess because that's kind of what we saw the most in spring. Last year's starting offensive line size was 1,574 pounds. This year, if it's that starting group, it's 1,566 pounds. So dropping, what, eight pounds total, which I think is a little funny. And then the total height Goes from 386 inches in height to 382 inches. So dropping eight pounds, dropping four inches just across the front. Just a little funny because we talk about how much better it's going to be, but there's more skill involved. There's more technique involved, obviously. But 
Um, the tackles are smaller than what we had a year ago. So just just mm -hmm. a note. I think we both agree they will be better, but yeah. still just an interesting note that I wanted to share. Yeah, look, uh, I'm so interested to see, you know, when it comes to strength and conditioning, we talk about strength and conditioning a lot on the, on, on the show, uh, you know, what they're going to do with the linemen. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have, we're going to have an opportunity uh, this spring uh, or this summer uh, to sit down with some linemen and talk about their process and what's going on there. I mean, just so many guys, yeah, uh, you know, you had on one of the shows, Zach, you had listed out, you know, what you felt like your starting five was on O line. Um, you know, I agree for the most part. I think that those guys have, you know, a solid group um, that should do well, and, and they've got nowhere to go. Yeah, up. yeah. Like Jaden Muskrat's a variable in that. Like, could he come in and win a guard spot? Sure. Um, or Connor Lou. I think those are really the only other two options. L let me ask but. you this, Zach. Media days is coming. Sure. And you got to take three players. Is there a guy on offensive line that we might see at media days? Representing I, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Gunnar Britton. Okay. Right. Or Avery Jones. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be one of those two, if I had to guess. But also, Hugh loves Tate Johnson. He does. I'm he telling you. He loves Tate Johnson. He loves Johnson. Him, so Tate Johnson, right? I was sitting around thinking about this the other day. I was like, who are they going to take the media days? I'm, listen, Jarquez Hunter, pre, you know, whatever, would, would have been a Slam dunk pick for media days, but I, I'm assuming yeah, he's not that's going. probably not happening. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you're probably not taking a quarterback. I, I mean, think last... the candidates for that are, but what if. The Mari Elson go, maybe? I talked to a player. Mm -hmm. I talked to a player, and uh, he thought he thought he would send Peyton Thorne. That's How no wild way. would that there's be? No, there's that's no it, way. That was my response. Like, Bro, there's, there's no, no way, way that happens. Because you, you're naming a starter. <laughs> you're naming a starter at media days. You may not Listen. care. He hey, may not listen, care. I'm all about it, but like, I mean, I think but he awesome. said he said that the battle will go into the fall. So if you if you take Peyton Thorne, you're telling us you're telling us yeah. the battle is over. I think Elijah McAllister makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I think Jason Jones makes a lot of sense, and then I think a Donovan Kaufman may make a lot. DJ James, I think, is your best player on the roster, but he's yeah. just I don't think DJ likes talking that much. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't really see him at media days, but. Yeah, th those are some of the ones that I think would make sense. I yeah. think Ke Keontae Scott would be a good one to take as well, too. I, I, I liked him. When we interviewed him, he was, I mean, very well-spoken, very eloquent. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I, 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 I would like Keontae Scott. I think he's going to play a significant role on defense, but it'll it'll be interesting to sure. see who they take. Yeah, so, yeah. Jalen and Nehemiah would both be interesting, too. But, yeah, uh, but yeah I think, I mean, if, if I'm Auburn, I want Elijah McAllister in front of a microphone. Like, I mean, that guy's awesome. Like just as far as like taking over a room with his personality and stuff, but and then you know he's talked a lot about Jason Jones being a leader, so um, I think Jason Jones has a chance as well. But yeah, that's a fun conversation for sure. And of course, we'll both be there. We'll do a lot of collab stuff when we're up there in Nashville. It's gonna be fun. Well. All right, the third uh, most uh, I, I actually I, this may be the most asked question that we get: How many wins will Auburn have in 2023? We share our thoughts in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked on Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Mike G, I've been hovering around 7-5 and five for pretty much most of the offseason. I still think I'm there. I think Auburn goes 7-5 and five in 2023 to answer this question. Mm. Okay. So, remember the ridiculous graphic that came out that when, when we were, Auburn was looking for a transfer quarterback, and they were like... Um, Getting Casey Thompson or Peyton Thorne will be the difference between Auburn making a bowl game or not making a bowl game. Uh, I think it was maybe on three that put out. Um, okay. They put out a lot of ridiculous things these days. But, like, the – I just want to be clear. It's the national on three, folks. It's not the, 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 the Auburn It's live. not yeah, the yeah. local <laughs> yeah, Auburn. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but the, the – I thought – no, Hugh Freeze is going to be the difference between Auburn making a bowl game and not making a bowl game. They were they fired the coach midseason, uh, essentially had trouble at quarterback all season and still came up one game short of making a bowl game, went overtime against Mississippi State short of making a bowl game. All right. So can you do that, though? Because in the whole Missouri thing. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just saying I don't like, know. There's close games both ways. Like I, 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 
Okay, but but hear me out though. But one thing could change against LSU, and we win that game. But coaching in both, I think, would have put Auburn over the edge in both of those games. And I'm just saying, like, it's it. close again. I like Hugh Freeze to get Auburn over the hump and Got get it. the win in those games against those particular teams. We're not talking about Georgia or LSU or Alabama, right? Like we're talking about Mississippi State and Missouri. Right? Uh, LSU last year was pretty dang close. Yeah, until, and, until it wasn't. Yeah, until it wasn't right, right up till the end. So all I'm saying is Hugh Freeze, six million dollars a year, six wins. That's it. Now you get quarterback. You get a quarterback who is competent and capable. Yeah, one eleven you know, games. Yep, right. And that could be the difference between six wins and eight wins. So I'm going. I'm betting. I'm betting on the QB developer, and I'm going with eight wins. Right now, here's here's my reasoning as well too, and I'm going to explain why this isn't a sunshine pump. This is Auburn's easiest draw in terms of schedule in a very, very long time as well. Agreed. Too. So yep. if there were a time that they were going to do it where people may underestimate them early in the season, they could come out of this 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 September stretch 4-0. So get it together. Let's, let's, let's run through this real quick. Let's go through the gibbies. Okay. Like, the, Auburn will win this game. UMass, Samford. Do we want to put at Vandy on there? Yeah, I'm I'm put, I'm I'm talking okay. Vandy down as a win. At, at Vandy and New Mexico State, so that's four. That's four. That you yeah, you're halfway there. Then at Cal, I think this is a win, but there's a lot of folks that are dressing this up to be a bigger challenge, and I think it actually is. Yeah, Auburn has not played well in the state of California, but like, um, I'm they they were. When's the last time we played in California? Um, national championship. Uh, they went out. Oh yeah, there. I forgot that game happened. Yeah. They went out there in 2003 versus USC. They got yeah, so I mean, the, these kids weren't even alive then, right? Yeah, like, like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you believe in curses, then maybe. But like, you know, ultimately, I'm just saying, I think they should win this game on paper. They I do too. So, game. so let's five is Cal, mm -hmm. and then I got one more game to make a bowl game. <laughs> yeah, so then we're looking at your maybes, okay. which are A and M at A and M. I'm not putting at LSU on there. Uh, home against Ole Miss, home against State, and at Arkansas. And so all of a sudden, it's like, if you win two of those, like, you're doing way better than everybody else thought you would. Right. And I just think that's realistic. I think Auburn will win two of those four games. Yeah, I do. And then I think they lose to Bama, LSU, and Georgia, which stinks, because those are the games we all care the most about. But I just think you lose those three. So I, I'm, I I get it. Well, hot take. We we Auburn hired the, the Bama Slayer, though. They I hired the guy who owns that. When we interviewed Hugh Freeze, I was joking with him. I was like, hey, man, you, you're on a short list of guys who own two wins versus Nick Saban. Like, you know, do you guys, is it a club? Do you guys have jackets? Like, you know, medallions, secret Dakota rings. <laughs> he laughed and he said, oh, that's a good idea. We should do that. But, yeah. Um, uh, ultimately, well, it's, him, it's him, Gus, and uh, Dabo, right? Is that it? I think Dabo, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's not. I mean, I don't even think, I don't think Kirby has beaten Saban twice, which sounds wild, right? Because they just won back-to-back -back national titles. Has he beaten well, them twice? Just in the national championship, right? Because they didn't play in the SEC last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, come on, like, listen, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. But if there, if if Bama this this year, I think Bama is vulnerable. Sure, personally, right? And we'll see how. I mean, they this is the first year in a while that they've gone in, you know, to the fall camp essentially not knowing who their starting quarterback. is. I mean, that sounds wild. I think about the guys who have come out. They're all playing in the league. The last three are all playing in the league. Mm -hmm. So, or four, right. last four, four are all playing in the league, yeah. man. Right. They're all starting quarterbacks on NFL teams. So, this is this. I think they're a little vulnerable by the end of the year. If Hugh Freeze has put it together, I'm not like, I think you have to call it an L right now, but, you know, anything can happen in an Iron Bowl when it's in Jordan Hare Stadium, man. So, uh, you know, this is the year they've got a favorable draw. So, going back over this, right, we, you know, UMass, Cal, Samford, that's that should be three and zero to start the season, right? Mm -hmm. um, Texas A and M picked up uh, Petrino as offensive coordinator. Uh, you know that could I, work. It could be awful. I mean, we just don't right. know. Who knows? I mean, but to to underscore how bad um, uh, 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 A and M's offense was, their defense Zach last year was top four in the conference in points per game allowed. Right? I mean, they were up there. I mean, they played. You know, decent defense, but they could not get it going on offense. If they struggle early offensively for whatever reason, I think Auburn can take that game. They've done well in College Station, you know, since they've come to the to the SEC. 
Uh, and then looking at the rest of the schedule, I don't, I'm not scared of the Mississippi schools, man. Like, yeah. You know, and you know, you got Vanderbilt, you got New Mexico State. I mean, the November slate is probably one of the easiest Auburn has seen in quite some time. When's the last time we've had a good November, man? It's been a minute. Yeah, I'm telling you. So 2017, I mean, maybe? Like where right. we've had a good November? Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd does, be great. does Arkansas scare you, really? Like, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that they're at scrubs. I'm just saying. No, but where it's positioned, like, you, uh, you go to. I mean, just two SEC games in a row is tough. Like, you go to Vandy, then you go to Arkansas. Like, that's that's just tough. That's hard to do against anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess the eight wins is about my belief in Hugh Freeze and my belief in him picking the right quarterback and developing that guy, right? Like, you know, that's that's where I feel like eight wins comes from. And when you combine that with one of the easiest schedules they've seen. Now, um, you know, I, I mentioned this, you know, uh, kind of on a rant that I did on Twitter where I was talking about uh, how easy the schedule was. Mm -hmm. Um. The schedule is depending on you know which schedule rankings, strength of schedule rankings you look at, is ranked twelfth, I believe. Right, that's only the third time in the last ten years that Auburn has had a, a strength of schedule rank outside the top ten. And that's wild because like Alabama and Georgia are still both good, so it's not yeah. like them fell off. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've actually looked at this before. Arkansas plays at Florida the week before we go there. So. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. That's yeah, helpful. I, I'm telling you, man, the schedule, the, the schedule is favorable. And, is. Uh, I, you know, I don't want – you know what I don't want is I don't want Auburn to have, go out and have all this success and everybody's got all these unrealistic expectations. I still think it's going to be a three-year build. Um, and it's still going to be about recruiting and getting guys out of high school who can come in and be, you know, legacies that, you know, will come develop in your program and eventually turn into NFL draft picks. You first yeah. got to do that. Yeah, I mean, because all these like guys that we like that he's gotten out of high school, like they're still. I think a lot of these guys still aren't going to be like ready. Yeah, and he's going to have to rebuild the offensive line again, right? Mm -hmm. You're probably going to lose three starters, and then you're going to have to rebuild the defensive backfield next year. So I mean, we still got we still got a ways to go. But yeah, as far as this season, I think it could be better than a lot of people think. Mike G, how can people give you some love, brother? Hey, man, go over to YouTube, check us out at the War Report. Uh, we just dropped an interview with. Uh, um, Cole Kublik talking about Payne Thorne. <laughs> so Ooh. lots of Payne Thorne talk this offseason. Um, you know, we're preparing for media days. We've got some great content coming for you guys at Mike Giddens, obviously at the War Report. You know, uh, follow all my guys, dude. We're, we're all over the place. We're going to be bringing you mad content this offseason. Yes, you can find all my written work at auburndaily.com. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.